Good morning, Ken Artisan, July 8th, 2020. I'm gonna do another video on my top 50 male performers and characters in television. I've done other videos on my top 50 television shows, check it out, my top 50 movies, my top 50 actors, movie actors, my top 50 movie actresses. This one is in television, my top male characters in television. See what you think of my list. Count down from number 50 to number one and see what you think, whether you agree or disagree. Before I get started, I wanted to make a, uh, an honorable mention list, those who didn't make my list, but I've watched their shows and I've watched their characters. And want to give them a little mention, okay? How about Ozzy Harry, and Harriet, that show, Ozzy Nelson? He had over 500 episodes. You got to mention him as a character in television history. The Adams Family, you got John Aston, America's Most Wanted, John Walsh. In the series Angels, David Barnes, Band of Brothers, Damian Lewis, Ron Livingston. Let's see, in Batman, you had uh, Burt Ward played Robin. He didn't make my top 50, but I'm just mentioning these people. Beauty and the Beast, Jay Ryan, Beverly Hillbillies, Buddy Epson, Max Baer, Beverly Hills 90210, Jason Priestley, and Luke Perry. They're significant characters. Combat, Rick Jason, Vic Morrow, Criminal Minds, Thomas Gibson, Shamor Moore, Matthew Gray. Played good characters. CSI, Las Vegas, William Peterson, Dawson's Creek, Joshua Jackson, Dennis the Menace, Jay North, Dick Van Dyke, Quinn Medicine Woman, Joe Lando, Dr. Kildare, Richard Chamberlain, Felicity, Scott Feedman, Scott Foley, Gilligan's Island, Jim Backus, Russell Johnson, Green Anchors, Eddie Albert, Gunsmoke, James Arness. Didn't make my top 50, though. House, Hugh Laurie, Hunter, Fred Dreyer, Dream of Jeannie, Larry Hagman, Lucy, Desi Arnaz. These are all male television stars. Didn't make my top 50. Takes a Thief, Robert Wagner. Let's see, L.A. Law, Harry Hamlin, Lassie, Tommy Reddick. Played his part well. Lois and Clark, The Adventures of Superman, Dean Cain. Had to leave him off my list. Lost in Space, Guy Williams. Lost, Naveen Adams, Andrews. Josh Holloway, Daniel Day Kim. Melrose Place, Thomas Calabaro. My Three Sons, Fred McMurray. NYPD Blue, Dennis France. Parcher's Family, David Cassidy. Rawhide, Eric Fleming. Roswell, Jason Beer, Run for Your Life, Ben Cazaro, Sea Hunt, Lloyd Bridges, Smallville, Tom Welling, Unsolved Mysteries, Robert Stack, Walker, Texas Ranger, Chuck Norris, and in the Walking Dead series, Abraham or Andrew Lincoln. All these male stars, I'm giving honorable mention as far as their TV shows. They play significant characters. I think it's time to miss to start with my list, counting from number 50 down to number one. The memorable characters that I admired, I considered. I'm going to put them in my top 50. See what you think. Number 50, Jerry Mathers played Beaver. Theodore Cleaver in the series Leave It to Beaver, 1957 through 1963. 
little kid. I really relate to this because I was born in 1954 and a lot of his adventures and at school or whether at home or playing with friends is what I identify with. So leave it to Beaver. Jerry Mathers did a good job. Comes in at number 50. Number 49, Curly. Curly Howard from the Three Stooges. You remember Mo, Larry, and Curly? They started their series 1934 and went through 1946. But Curly makes my list as, as a significant and memorable character in television history. Number 48, Bob Denver. He played Gilligan on Gilligan's Island. The series was on for three years, 1964 to 1967. He was a crewman of the SS Minnow, first mate of the Skipper. He's a significant character, and I, I enjoyed Gilligan's Island. I got a few laughs and chuckles. So Bob Denver comes in at number 48. Number 47, you're going to be interested in this one. Clayton Moore. The series, The Lone Ranger, was on from 1949 to 1957. And remember Tonto, the nickname he gave the Lone Ranger? Kimo Sabe. Remember the Lone Ranger, his white horse, Hayo Silver? So the Clayton Moore, significant character of the Lone Ranger, comes in at number 47. 46, Alan Hale. He was on Gilligan's Island. He played the skipper, captain of the SS Minnow. He was a significant character. You ask people, do they remember the series Gilligan's Island? What will they say? Yeah, I remember Gilligan, Marianne, Ginger, Mr. and Mrs. Howe, and the professor. And they'll mention the skipper. Now it's played by Alan Hale. Comes in number 46 on my top 50. 45, Kent McCord. He was in the series Adam 12, 1968 through 1975. He played the character of Jim Reed, the rookie cop. He was paired with Officer Malloy of the Los Angeles Police Department, and every day they were in their car and they got a call, Adam 12, Adam 12, burglary here, car robbery here, woman in distress here. Jim Reed, played by Kent McCord. Number 45 on my list. Number 44, Roy Finnis. Remember him? He was in the series The Invaders, 1967 through 1968. He played the character of David Vincent. Aliens from a dying planet, their destination was Earth to make it their world. David Vincent saw them one night. He got lost at a lonely country road. He was looking for a shortcut, never found it. He didn't have enough sleep. But he now knows that the invaders, the aliens from another planet, are here. And what's their mission? To take over the world. David Vincent, played by Roy Thinnis, in the series The Invaders, comes in at number 44. Number 43 on my list, Robert Colbert. He was in the series called The Time Tunnel, 1966-1967, lasted one season. He played the character of Douglas Phillips. Both scientists enter the time tunnel and they travel back. They landed on the Titanic, the Pearl Harbor, Krakatoa, Custer's Last Stand, Battle of the Alamo. It only lasted one season, the time tunnel. But I remember him, Robert Colbert played the character of Douglas Phillips. Comes in 43 on my list. Memorable and significant characters in television history. Number 42, Eric LaSalle. He was in the series ER, 
played Peter Benton. He was the surgeon. Took care of the uh, cases in the ER. People came in, had a bullet wound. He diagnosed them and say, up, oh, time for surgery. So bring them up to the OR. ER was on for 15 seasons, 1994 through 2009. Peter Benton, played by Eric LaSalle. 42 on my list. 43. Nope, 41. Excuse me. Dennis Hespert. He was in the series 24. Played David Palmer. He was a Democratic senator from Maryland in the first season. First African-American candidate for president of the United States. And during that season, he was a target of an assassination. Jack Bauer came to the rescue. A significant character, David Palmer, first season, runs for president, second season, he is the president, so he has to stop the nuclear bomb, season three, he has to deal with the virus, season four, he resigns because of a political scandal, and then season five, he did get assassinated, so David Palmer, significant, memorable character. In 24, the series ran from 2001 through 2010. Number 40 on my list, back to ER, Noah Wiley. Played the character of John Carter, learning physician in the first season in the ER, has to learn from his superiors. But eventually through the years, he got an inheritance and he built a hospital. Again, ER was on for 15 seasons from 1994 to 2009. And Noel Wiley played John Carter. He's in my top 50. Counting down. Number 39 on my list, Michael Varton. He was in the series Alias, 2001 through 2006. He played the character of Michael Vaughn. He was uh, Sidney Bristol's handler, worked for the CIA, double agent, CIA and SD6. And they have to figure out cases and track down known terrorists and all the conspiracies within the government. Michael Vaughn, played by Michael Varton in the series Alias, comes in at number 39 on my list. 38. Let me make mention of a note here from number 50 through all the way down to 10. All these actors and characters are interchangeable as far as significance and importance and what I admired about them. So they can put anywhere in the list as far as who's better or who's not as good. So if you're saying, why is this character listed above another, it's not a matter of that. From 50 to number 10 is interchangeable. But from 10 to number 1, those are my favorites. Way do you see how, who my favorites are and who's number 1. Okay, 38. Jack Webb had a series called Dragnet, 1967 through 1970. He played the character of Joe Friday, no-nonsense, serious Los Angeles cop. He was a detective, figured out the cases, got on call with his partner, Harry Morgan. Jack Webb played Joe Friday, comes in at number 38. 36 on my list, David Hasselbert. He was in the series Baywatch for 10 years, 1989 through 1999. He played Mitch Buchanan, lifeguard, saves people out of the water, uh, took care of runaway boats that are on fire, and also helped school the lifeguards in the series Baywatch. Mitch Buchanan, played by David Hasselberg. Comes in number 36 on my list, 35. Back to the series, Adam 12. Martin Milner, he was the lead cop. Remember I've talked about Jim Reed? Well, Martin Milner played 
Officer Malloy partnered with Jim Reed. And he he was in the squad car of Adam 12 where they got uh, notices. One Adam 12, one Adam 12, um, burglary in progress on Elm Street. So again, Adam 12 was on from 1968 through 1975. And he, pl he played the character, Pete Malloy. That's Martin Milner. Significant and memorable character in television history. 35 on my list. 34. How about the series Bonanza? Michael Landon. 14 years Bo Bonanza was on. It was from 1959 through 1973. And he played little Joe Cartwright. Born on the Ponderosa, he was one of three sons of Ben Cartwright. What a significant character. He, he was in over 400 episodes of, of Bonanza. Got married in season 14. I've got him on my list. One of my favorite characters too. Little Joe Cartwright on the series Bonanza. Played by Michael Landon. 33 on my list. The series CSI New York. Gary Sinise, nine years, 2004 to 2013. He played Mac Taylor. He was a uh, crim detective and criminalist in the lab that figured out the clues of how people got murdered or worked for the government. The FBI. He was a skilled uh, criminal, criminologist. Is that the right word? Pardon me if I pronounce it wrong. But he played Mac Taylor. I enjoyed that series, CSI, New York. 32 on my list. The series, Prison Break. It was the older, the brother who was locked up in Prison Break. Dominic Perot played this character of Lincoln Burroughs. Series was on from 2005 to 2009. He was falsely convicted of murder and he was in prison and waiting for death row. And his brother comes in to help him escape the series Prison Break. And I like the character of Lincoln Burroughs. Coming in, number 32 on my list, memorable characters. 31. How about this series? Perry Mason. 1957 through 1966, played by Raymond Burr. Wow, he never lost a case. He was a uh, criminal defense lawyer practicing in Los Angeles and each episode he figured out all the clues and all and questioned all the witnesses and usually his formula was simple get them to confess in the courtroom I think over 170 episodes he didn't lose once Perry Mason played by Raymond Burr comes in at number 31 all right number 30 Adam West, he played Bruce Wayne in the series Batman, 1966 through 1968. Lives in Gotham City, lives in the mansion. He's a billionaire, but he does crime fighting at night as Batman. Adam West, significant character in television history. Number 30 on my list. 29, counting down, the series 24. This is the second character I've, I've uh, admired. First one was David Palmer, played by Dennis Hassabers. This character, Carlos Bernard, played Tony Almeida. He worked in the... Um, Here's a federal agent in C CTU, Los Angeles. And he helped figure out what the uh, responsibilities of the government were. T 
to help stop terrorism in the city. So Tony Almeida, played by Carlos Bernard, comes in at number 29 on my list. The series was on from 2001 to 2010. 28 on my list, Ross Martin. He was in the Wild Wild West from 1965 to 1969. He played Artemis Gordon. He was a sidekick of James West. These were secret servant agents in the Wild Wild West to protect the president, assigned to protect the president. They lived on the train. He was a master of disguise. When so when the robbers were trying to infiltrate the western towns, he disguised himself and helped James West fight them off. Interesting series. I liked it. The Wild Wild West. Ross Martin played Artemis Gordon. Excuse me. <clears throat> 27 on my list. Back to Leave it to Beaver. Remember I mentioned Theodore Cleaver, number 50 on my list, played by Jerry Mathers. Well, his brother was Wally Cleaver, and he, he was played by Tony Dow. 1957 through 1963, the series was on. He was the older brother, very popular with sports, popular with the girls, got into trouble, trouble. Had a friend called Eddie Haskell and Lumpy. They were just the teenage high school years of what it was like back in the 50s and 60s. So the, so the series Leave it to Beaver, I've got Wally Cleaver, played by Tony Dow, on my list. Coming in, number 27. Memorable characters. 26 on my list. Series called Friday Night Lights. Kyle Chandler played Eric Taylor. Series is on from 2006 to 2011. He was the uh, football head coach of the Dillon Panthers in Texas. First season, they win the title. And the series focused on the family life and the football life and dealing with quarterbacks and players and racial strives and town complaints. The series Friday Night Lights. Kyle Chandler played Eric Taylor, the head coach of the Dillon Panthers. 26 on my list. 25. Back to the series ER. Remember the first character I liked? Two characters. I liked John Carter and I liked Peter Benton. They were they were uh, doctors in ER. Well, the third character I like was Doug Ross, played by George Clooney. ER was, again, from 1994 to 2009, 15 seasons. And Doug Ross, he was a dedicated ER pediatrician, mainly focused on helping kids. One of the episodes, there was a kid stuck in the storm drain, and the water was overflowing and drowning the kid. And Doug Ross, the doctor... Saved the kid's life. Significant character, Doug Ross in the series ER, played by George Clooney. 24 on my list, counting down. The series called Get Smart. Don Adams played the character of Maxwell Smart. He was agent 86. Just a goofy, uh, what would you call him, agent? He worked for the uh, organization called Control, and they were fighting the uh, evil policies of the organization called Chaos. He partnered with uh, Agent 99, played by Barbara Felton. But Don Adams, he comes in on my list, playing Maxwell Smart. Memorable characters. 24 on my list, counting down. 23, remember Star Trek, 1966 through 1969? Leonard Nimoy played Mr. Spock, the Vulcan with the uh, pointed ears and live long and prosper. I admired his character. 
He uh, was the first officer of Captain James T. Kirk aboard the Starship Enterprise. You remember that series? I've got him on my list as memorable characters. 22 on my list. The series Criminal Minds. I had honorable mention of some of the others that were in Criminal Minds. But this character makes my top 50. It was played by Mandy Pat. Patekin, he played Jason Gideon. Series was on for about 15 years, but he only he only uh, stuck around for two seasons. But he was a criminal profiler for BAU unit in Virginia, which is the FBI's behavioral analysis unit. If there's a murder, they show up on the scene and they figure out all the clues of who done it, and then they track down the criminal mind of the evil person and many times find him. There's a good episode where the girl was kidnapped, and they found the house, but when they broke into the house, they didn't know where the girl was, and they looked all around, and Jason Gideon figured out the girl was up in the attic by all the clues. Jason Kit Gideon significant character in television history on the series Criminal Minds comes in number 22 on my list. 21 on my list. Back to Bonanza. First character I liked was little Joe Cartwright played by Michael Lanton. Next character I liked on that series was Hoss Cartwright played by Dan Blocker. He was a big friendly friendly guy played he weighed over 300 pounds, but he helped fight the bad guys in the saloons. And in Lake Tahoe, they had Ponderosa, and people got on their land. They had to kick them off. Hoss Cartwright had some romances. Again, the series is on for 14 years, but he, he was only on for 13 years because the last season he died young. I believe he was only 43 years old. Dan Blocker played Hoss Cartwright, memorable character in Bonanza. Number 20 on my list. Back to Leave it to Beaver, the third character I like. Remember Beaver, Theodore Cleaver. And then you had Wally Cleaver, his brother, played, played by Tony Dow. And then... Third character alive, and he beats him as far as order. <clears throat> Ken Osmond played Eddie Haskell, the troublemaker, the sneaky character, very polite to parents, but he was mean to everybody else, especially Beaver. Called him Squirt. Called him uh, Sam. He got into trouble. He wasn't as popular with the girls. Wally Cleaver was the uh, good-looking guy. And Eddie Haskell was kind of like the, the character that you didn't want to hang around with. But he was a barrel of laughs. And I enjoyed his character. Ken Osmond played the part of Eddie Haskell in Leave it to Beaver. Coming in number 20 on my list. 19. The series Lost. I mentioned some uh, memorable honorable mentions of some of the other characters in that series but this guy Matthew Fox played Jack Shepard he was the lead character in that series they had he was on the uh, the plane crash and they landed on the island and the island is not what it's supposed to be and he tries to rescue everybody they travel all over the island he's a doctor Jack Shepard played by Matthew Fox Significant character on for six years, 2004 through 2010. Got him on my list. Number 18, counting down. Back to Bonanza. The third character I like. Little Joe, Hoss, and now Adam Cartwright, played by Ber Pernell Roberts. Series was on 14 years, Bonanza, 1959 through 1973. He was the oldest son of Ben Cartwright. And he uh, had some fights in the saloons and had romances with the pretty girls. And he was a smart guy in the Ponderosa. 
He only played seven seasons. When he left, the series was never the same. Bonanza. Adam Cartwright. Coming in number 18 on my list. Number 17. The series Smallville. Michael Rosenberg played the character of Lex Luthor. Now, I, me I mentioned Tom Welling played Clark Kent. He didn't make my top 50. This character did a better job in Smallville. Michael Rosenberg played Lex Luthor. He was... He was the son of Lionel Luther. He helped run Luther Corps, but uh, eventually became the enemy of Clark Kent and tries to destroy the city of Smallville and take it down. The series was on for 10 years, 2001 through 2011. Smallville, Lex Luthor, significant character in television history. Counting down, number 16. CSI Miami, I mentioned CSI New York, had Mac Taylor. Well, CSI Miami had Horatio Kane, played by David Carisso. That was on for 10 years, 2002 through 2012. He was a homicide detective for the Miami-Dade police. He wore the sunglasses, and he figured out a lot of clues of when there was a murder who done it, and then help track them down. That was in the series CSI Miami. Coming in number 16 on my list. Number 15, the series X-Files. David Duchovny played Fox Mulder. Nine seasons from 1993 to 2002. It was a science fiction series. He was a, an FBI agent for the X-Files, figuring out if there are aliens or conspiracies within the FBI to hold the truth. What is the truth? His partner was Dana Scully. He believes in unidentified objects and the existence of aliens. Fox Mulder. Usually the, each episode was a monster of the week. You ask anybody on the street about X-Files, and who do they remember? Fox Mulder, Dana Scully. Number 14 on my list. This is an interesting one, comedy. The series Bewitched it was on from 1964 to 1972. I've got Dick York on my list playing Darren Stevens, the wife of Samantha Stevens, and had to deal with her mother, and he uh, gets into trouble with all the, mor the uh, immortal that come to visit Uncle Arthur. He gets changed into a horse or gets zapped. But he was the wife of Samantha Stevens in the series Bewitch. Darren Stevens, played by Dick Yard, significant character, television history, memorable. Number 13 on my list. All right, the series of The Adventures of Superman in 1952 to 1958 makes my list. George Reeves played Clark Kent and Superman in that series. He's born on Krypton to Joel, Joel, Joel Orell and Lara. And they were on Krypton, and the father sent the baby off to Earth. And Clark Kent grows up in Smallville with Martha and Jonathan Kent. And eventually, Clark Kent moves to Metropolis and works for the Daily Planet and deals with Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and Peter Perry White of the Daily Planet. He becomes the reporter and not only saves people, but writes reports for the newspaper. I've got him on my list at number 13, George Reeves. Significant. He was the best Superman of all the characters who have played him. George Reeves was the best. Okay, number 12 on my list. The series Hercules, The Adventures, Leg Legendary Journeys. 
Kevin Sorbo played Hercules, 1995 through 2001. You know, it's the fantasy version of ancient Greece. And he has to deal with all the uh, particular medieval elements of that period. Goes to the villages, saves all the people from bandits, robbers. Hercules. I like the series. Kevin Sorbo played Hercules. Comes in number 12 on my list. Number 11, getting close to the top 10. Star Trek. The original series, William Shatner played James T. Kirk, captain of the Enterprise. Boldly go where no man has gone before. He's on for three years, 1966 through 1969. You ask anybody on the street, who is the captain of the Enterprise? And they'll say James T. Kirk. Significant character on my countdown. All right, here's the top 10. Who are my favorite characters in television history and the actors who played them? Number 10, the series Prison Break. Went, Wentworth Miller. Wentworth Miller played the character of Michael Schofield. His brother is in prison and he purposely commits a crime so he can get into prison to help save his brother and break him out. And the first season is uh, figuring out all the ways how to get out of the Illinois State Penitentiary and take his brother Lincoln Burroughs with him. Michael Schofield comes in at number 10, very memorable, significant in television history. Number nine. This is an interesting one. The series The Fugitive, 1963 through 1967. But who's number nine? Lieutenant Philip Gerard, played by Barry Morse. The relentless pursuit of Richard Kimball, the pediatrician who was falsely accused of murdering his wife. And he was the detective that went back and forth across country trying to track him down. Lieutenant Philip Gerard, classic episodes. Uh, one time, uh, Richard Kimball saved Gerard's life, but yet Gerard had to enforce the law to bring him in, tracks him down, and then memorable, the last two episodes of season four was the climax. He's the one who took out the one-armed man and helped exonerate Richard Kimball. Lieutenant Philip Gerard, played by Barry Morris in the series The Fugitive, comes in at number nine on my list. Number eight. Back to ER, the series. Anthony Edwards played Mark Green, the doctor who works in the ER. Crazy shifts and deals with every emergency that comes in, whether bullet wounds or diseases or accidents or medical emergencies. Mark Green, played by Anthony Edwards. Series was on for 15 years, 1994 to 2009. Worked in the Chicago ER. Classic, classic series. I've got Mark Green on my list at number eight. Number seven, the series The Practice. Dylan McDermott, played the character of Bobby Donald in the series, The Practice. He had his own law firm and they dealt with cases, divorce cases, murder cases, robbery cases, whatever cases. He was the defense attorney and each episode had an episode or a storyline. And in the courtroom, was, he, was the, the client guilty or innocent? Bobby Donald, 
played by Dilek McDermott in the series The Practice. One of my favorite characters in television history. Number six, the Rifleman series. Chuck Connors played Lucas McCain. He defends the town of North Fork with a with a rifle, not guns, but with a rifle. He lived on a, a ranch with his son, and he defended the, the the small town of the criminals and bandits who came in wanting to take over the town. The series was on from 1958 through 1963. The Rifleman. Lucas McCain. Number six on my list. Number five. Back to the series, The Wild Wild West. James West, played by Robert Conrad. It's on for four years, 1965 through 1969. He was a secret service agent on the train with Artemis Gordon. Helped defend the president and take out the wild western cowboys. A lot of fights in every episode. I'll make mention that I was uh, visited Basquez State Park in California and they were filming the wild wild west and I saw Robert Conrad who played James West and I got his autograph. I think I was Oh, what would I have been? I think I was 12 years old. I don't have the autograph right now. I don't know what happened to it. Okay, number four on my list. Back to Bonanza. I mentioned, mentioned Little Joe, Hoss Cartwright, Adam Cartwright, but number four on my list has to be Ben Cartwright, played by Lauren Green. He was the God-fearing, Bible-quoting... Patriarch of the Ponderosa in Lake Tahoe in Nevada. He had three sons and three different wives. He was the star of Bonanza for 14 seasons, over 400 episodes. Ben Cartwright. He, he wasn't so much involved in the saloon fighting or the gun fights, but he was the one who brought calm and sense to the town of Virginia City in Bonanza. I've got him number four on my list. Who are the top three? Number three, Richard Dean Anderson played in the series from 1985 to 1992. He played the character of MacGyver, a guy who solves crimes, but with no violence and no guns. And he uses his wits. He uses his smarts. And whatever situation he got into, he took whatever was available and got out and uh, solved crimes. He was a special agent, call him, for the Phoenix Foundation, MacGyver. You ask anybody on the street, have you ever heard of the name MacGyver? And they say, yeah, the guy who got out of jams by using devices that were available, like a knife, a rope, tin cans, water bottles. If he was in a jam, he got out of it. That is MacGyver. Significant series in television history. Played by Richard Dean Anderson. Number two on my list. Back to the Fugitive series. I mentioned Lieutenant Philip Gerard. But who's number two? David Jansen played Dr. Richard Kimball, falsely confused, accused for the murder of his wife. Richard Kimball. He came home one night and saw his wife murdered 
and he saw the one-armed man running from his house. And after being convicted in a jury courtroom, Richard Kimball was on a train and he escaped. And for four years, episode after episode, he was searching for the one-armed man to try to clear his name. But in the meantime, he had many romances, but he met a lot of friends who helped him out of jams and he helped them with their family problems. He traveled all over the country and then in a classic two hour final, he got exonerated by tracking down the one-armed man and there was a witness to the crime who confessed that he saw the one-armed man do it. And Lieutenant Gerard took him out on the tower. There's a famous fight scene on the tower between Richard Kimball and the one-armed man. And he confessed. And they had a fight up on the tower. And the one-armed man knocked down, Fred Johnson, the one-armed man, knocked down Kimball and had a gun and was ready to shoot him. But Lieutenant Gerard had a rifle and took the fatal shot of the one-armed man. What a classic series that was. Richard Kimball, played by David Jansen, comes in at number two on my list. Who's number one as far as television characters that I am memorable, significant, and worth watching in television history? Can you guess? Let you think about it a little bit. The series was on from 2001 to 2010. You had a federal agent who worked for the counter terrorist unit in Los Angeles, CTU. What was his name? Jack Bauer, played by Kiefer Sutherland, comes in at number one on my list as far as memorable characters. I was thinking of putting David Jansen as Richard Kimball as number one. But that series was on for four years. 24 of the series was on for nine years. And what a series it was. First season, Jack Bauer, his wife and daughter are kidnapped, has to track them down and then save the presidential candidate David Palmer from being assassinated. And there's 24 episodes in the first season, and it's a clock that starts at midnight, and it goes from midnight to 1 a.m. Events occur in real time, and each episode builds and builds and builds to the climax of 12 midnight, 24 hours later. And then season two, there's a bomb in Los Angeles. Jack Bauer has to track down the terrorists and defuse the bomb, along with David Palmer having problems within his cabinet, one of taking, taking him out. Season three, there's a virus from Mexico, and Jack Bauer has to locate the person who wants to spread the virus across the United States and kill millions of people. Season four, Bauer is a part of the Department of Defense and there's a assassination attempt on the president, not Palmer, because Palmer resigned in season three. There's a new president, but he's on Air Force One and there's a nuclear warhead aimed for Air Force One to take out the president. Season five, there's a new president, but he's corrupt and he wants to take down the entire US government for oil interests. So Jack Bauer, again, is a significant federal agent working with CTU to expose President Palmer. Season six, the Chinese are infiltrating the U.S. and Jack Bauer has to stop the Chinese from taking over the USA. Season seven, the series shifts to Washington, D.C. and the new president and the vice president are fighting. 
and there's a uh, a group from Sangala that come and want to take over the White House, and Jack Bauer protects the president. Season 8 shifts to New York with United Nations as a summit, and foreign countries, Russia, want to take over the USA, and Jack Bauer comes in as the federal agent to take out all the bad guys. Season 9 shifts to Great Britain, and there's an assassination attempt, and the drones, and the terrorists want to take over England. Jack Bauer saves the day, but in the end, he gets captured by the Russians, and we don't know what the fate of Jack Bauer is. That's why I have him number one on my list. Kiefer Sutherland, excellent job of playing the federal agent and the well-written series and 24 episodes every year and it countdowns the clock. Amazing. Okay, those are my top 50 memorable male characters in television history. What do you think? I'm going to do another one on the top 50 female male characters in television history. Who will be in the top 10? 50, I can do 50 through 10 again and mention a lot of leading ladies and their characters. But who will be the top 10 and who will be number one that I admired? Check that video out. Ken Artizone, thanks for watching, and I'm out.